Hello everyone, Time to Grind here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another patch breakdown. Now for this video, we're going to be looking at the March 1st patch, which went out around two days ago late that night. So there's several, you know, gameplay changes, cosmetic changes, balance changes, all that good stuff, and so we're going to, you know, talk about it, analyze it, uh, my thoughts on it, some theory crafting, you know, all that good stuff. So let's jump right in. So the first thing first is we just have a straight up gameplay change and it's the speed at which a payload moves has been increased for when one or two players are escorting it but the max speed of three plus players escorting it hasn't changed. So what this pretty much means is if you have a single or two people moving a payload it's going to be moving faster than it used to be. And what this could actually do is make flankers a lot better because say they flank around the map and you know the defending team is pushed up way too far if you get a genji or a reaper or a tracer and you kind of flank around and try to push the payload you're going to be able to push it a lot more than you used to be and i think this is blizzard's response to all the people trying to uh, say you know that defense is a lot easier than offense and because on control points it's not that bad because if offense if you know the attacking side wins just a single match or team fight, they're gonna win that point. They're gonna win a single point and they only need to win two. And a lot of the times you can already get progress on the second point just from the same team fight. But payload, you can't do that as much. You win a single team fight and you're only gonna be able to push the payload, you know, a certain amount. So this means if you have one or two players, you know, a lot of the times it's gonna be flankers, you're gonna be able to push the payload a lot faster. So it's gonna definitely be interesting to see how it changes, um, the, I guess, meta or the feeling about offense versus defense, but I, I think it's pretty interesting because you're going to have to watch out for flankers more and all that good stuff. Next we have loot boxes, and all sprays and voice lines are now considered common, all player icons and victory poses are considered rare, and rare and epic quantities of credits will appear more frequently, while legendary quantities of credit will appear less frequently. So what this does is it'll make all sprays and voice lines, you'll, you'll be getting those more often, um, because, you know, sprays aren't that cool. I mean, they're cool once you find a good one, but they're not that amazing to get as, say, a rare. And player icons and victory poses, they're going to be considered more unique. You know, they're going to be a little more special. And rare and epic quantities of credits will now appear more frequently in loot boxes. What that's going to do is, say you get a rare or epic, you're most like, there's going to be a higher chance of getting one you've already gotten, which is going to award you credits. And I believe the reason why they're doing this is because some people, you're not going to earn any of the credits because the only way to get those are to get duplicates of what you already have. So by increasing the rate at which rare and epic quantities of credits appear, you're going to actually be able to buy the cosmetics and victory poses that you want. And legendary quantities of credits will now appear less frequently in loot boxes because as you know, legendaries are really hard to come by. So by making them where quantities of credits, you know, the duplicates will appear less, you know, legendary is going to be a more unique thing because most likely you won't have already had it. And so next we have matchmaking and there's several behind the scene improvements for players at higher skill levels and groups. Um, and the reason being is because a lot of higher skill players were getting matched with lower skill players, not even bad players, just, you know, maybe lower skill players because the matchmaking system wasn't able to find uh, matches for the higher skilled players in a timely manner, so it was just kind of like, ah, yeah, you can you can go in this match, and so you know they've done some fixings with that, and um, players from Australia, South America, and Southeast Asia should no longer experience very long queue times. So that's good for all of you people that live there. I don't I don't live there. I live in the United States, so that doesn't really affect me. But if you live in those areas, you know, good for you. Then for the social wheel, uh, the little thing where you can give commands and all that great stuff, they, re they removed the cooldown when using just your normal voice lines, and they added a short global cooldown when using any option in the communications wheel, but spamming any of the options within a short period of time will lock you out for a few seconds. So this makes it good because a lot of the times you're in a group and you want to like constantly just use your voice lines with your friends or whatever, so you know there's no cooldown on the voice lines, but if you're spamming anything on the communications wheel, then you're not going to be able to chat for a while because normally you're not going to have to give that many. You're going to say, hey, you know, group up with me, but they don't want people going group up with me, group up with me, group, you know, just saying the same thing over and over. So I guess it's, you know, all of these changes are very nice. They're welcome. Um, definitely be interesting to see kind of how some of them play out, but that's not what is big here. What's big here are the hero balance changes and we got a lot of them. 
So first off, we have Bastion, and kind of a quality of life update, kind of a buff, is his aim restrictions has been removed when transforming. Because previously, when you went into sentry mode, you would be locked in a fixed position, only able to look forward. Now you're able to look around while transforming. So say someone turns out like right behind you as you're transforming, you can actually turn around to prevent them from hitting your core, or you can just look around. So it's just nice to be able to do, also good. And his core actually now if you shoot his core it only gives you double damage rather than triple damage and that's because they took all of his extra armor away that they awarded him when he went into sentry mode but he was still taking triple damage from behind so you know now it's going to take double i f feel like that still may be a little too much because he only has 300 health but we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out then we have genji and a lot of people were complaining about genji just you know how fast he could melt people how high health he had all, all this stuff just that he was a really he was a really good hero so what they did is they made his health from 200 they brought it down to 150 and they said you know because genji's a fast character with the smaller character model you know he's kind of hard to kill so you know they, he shouldn't have 200 health and i agree with this completely he shouldn't have 200 health if he is a flanking character just you know almost as fast as tracer if not more due to his dash and all that stuff like that and especially because he can, you know, kind of do his little ricochet thing, it can be kind of hard to kill him. So the decreased health from 200 to 150, I actually really like. It seems to really fit him because now you actually have to be a little more careful the way you play him. And so I, I, I just like it, um, but it's definitely a huge nerf to Genji. Then we have Lucio. Now, everyone was claiming, you know, Lucio was easily the best support, and for various reasons. He could do tons of damage, he could, you know, heal all his teams while doing all that damage. You know, I made a video about that a while ago, or a little bit ago. But they decreased his health from 200 to 150. Now, I don't like this change for a few reasons. First of all, if you did watch my Lucio video, I said that although they might have to do a small nerf to, her, to him, I would rather them just buff all the other supports, maybe bringing them to Lucio level. And I know that might not have been the most reasonable thing, but you know, maybe buffing the other supports and giving Lucio a tiny nerf would be good. But taking 50 health just off of him, first of all, is a huge nerf to him without buffing the other supports. And Lucio, th that was what was special about him because it feels like every support has their little you know niche they all can do something special and i always thought blizzard was trying to make lucio's be that he can actually participate in these team fights damage wise a great amount while also supporting his team and by taking away one fourth of his health he can't really participate in those team fights anymore he's kind of have to gonna stay in the back a little bit and worry a little less about just being able to jump in there and fight and Lucio is actually a great support for people that don't like playing supports because he still could do a lot of damage but now with the 50 less health he's gonna be able to fight opponents a lot harder it's gonna be a lot harder to do so I personally don't like this like all these we're gonna have to see how they play out but I would rather them just buff a lot of the other supports and maybe give him a tiny nerf but the tiny nerf shouldn't be about his health. I don't think his health was problem. A uh, problem, if anything, make you know his damage less because that way he will be able to participate a little less in the fights because he won't be able to output that much damage. But I don't think touching his health is you know the best idea. Then we have Junkrat, and now if his tire is destroyed, it no longer detonates because a lot of the times if you hear the Junkrat tire, a lot of the times you're like, oh god, I already died because even if you shoot it, it's still gonna kill you. Well now, if you kill the tire, it doesn't detonate, but in order to compensate for this, it has 150 health. So it's going to be actually hard to kill, but you're actually going to want to kill it. Uh, and I actually really like this. It makes Junkrat's ultimate feel a lot less uh, unfair, I guess. And on top of that, it significantly de decreased the damage fall off with, within the radius, the detonation radius. So... It's going to do a lot more damage if he detonates it or the damage fall off. So I guess that's range. And, but you'll actually want to destroy it. You're going to be looking out for more. So I like that. It makes him feel more fair, more fun. Um, all that great stuff. Because on top of that, it's also fun for Junkrat because it won't just die to a single like tracer shot, you know. Um, so it's kind of a win-win for everyone. 
Uh, now May, her primary fire, now has a minimum slow effect that's applied instantly. And this is actually a huge buff because, say a Tracer was flying by May. If she tried to, you know, hold her endothermic blaster on Tracer, Tracer would just slow, just barely, and then just continue running. But now, if she holds it on Tracer, Tracer's gonna have an instant minimum slow effect that's already applied. And, you know, the total time to freeze a target still hasn't changed. So this is just great because May was built to kind of stop these um, flankers, but she couldn't really do that because it took a while, and if they're running fast, you're not going to be able to hold it on them for that long. But now, you know, they have a minimum slow, and then from there, you know, you can follow up. And her Blizzard ultimate, the radius can no longer be blocked by bar barriers or payloads, so it also just kind of a quality of life update plus a big buff for her ultimate. So I feel like, because she was easily, I, in my opinion, the worst hero in the game. She was fun, but I don't think she was that great. But this will hopefully change that. And now, like a lot of us, including myself, really wanted back was Mercy being able to target the souls of dead allies again. Because they took it out because the UI, you know, was kind of frustrating for newer players, but everyone really loved that. And so that actually is a big buff. Because... She can now fly into where her teammates died by targeting the dead, you know, soul and then ultimate. So it's just a way to get to where you need to ultimate faster. So that's actually a buff for Mercy um, that, I, that I really like and I was hoping would come back. And then we have probably the person who got nerfed the hardest and that is Winston. Now, if you watched any competitive games, you know about all, you know, the two Winstons and there were just shields everywhere. And even if you played the game or watched any, uh, you know, gameplay... There are shields everywhere, and the game felt more like, oh, let's see how fast I can kill this shield, rather than, oh, let's see how fast I can kill the opponent. So now, the shield health has decreased from 1,000 to 600. That's 400 health it lost. And on top of that, the cooldown no longer activates after the barrier expires, or the cooldown activates after the barrier expires. So, you're not only going to be getting the shield a lot less, but you're also, the shield's not going to be that effective. And I really like this because Winston's shields were a little, I don't think he was the most overpowered person in the game. He was definitely good, but he was annoying. And this makes him a lot less annoying, but still good though. Winston is still a very good pick, and I like that. Then we have Zarya, her projected barrier duration has decreased from 4 seconds to 2 seconds. So it kind of feels like they're, you know, hammering down on a lot of the, um, the tanks like that put up shields besides Reinhardt. And so this kind of, I, I don't know how I feel about this because Zarya didn't feel that, I mean she was good, she was a good character, but I don't think she deserved a nerf. Um, so I, I feel like people are going to be picking Zarya even less now, but... I don't know, maybe, you know, in other games a lot of people were picking Zarya, but she just, in my opinion, didn't seem that great to be nerfed like that by cutting the duration of her shield in half. Um, it could be because, you know, of it could cause some people to have a little less fun just because, hey, I now can't shoot this person for four seconds, which is a lot in, you know, fast-paced FPS like this. But, you know, it, it we'll, we'll see how that plays out like a lot of other stuff. Um... Next, we have Zenyatta, and players will now receive a notification whenever either of his orbs are returned from a dead target. And this is actually really good, and it's a quality of life up, up, update, because say you put an orb of destruction on someone, a lot of the times you don't know, if you're like, oh, maybe I want to put an orb of destruction on this guy, you don't know if you're going to be taking it away from, you know, someone that still has it on. So now you'll be notified whenever it returns to you, which is very, very helpful. And then they fixed, you know, some various bug fixes, um, which is all great. But the biggest things were all of these changes, um, the hero balance changes. And Blizzard even said they're going to be making, you know, kind of drastic, more aggressive changes uh, while the game's invaded because they really want to get the balance hammered down. And so I feel like they were spot on on a lot of the nerfs, kind of like Genji, but I feel like people like Zarya and... Lucio, if they were going to be nerfed, I don't know if those were the ways I would have done it. But either way, it's nice to be seeing all these balance changes. It's nice to be getting patch notes, you know, in-depth patch notes, all this good stuff. And, you know, yeah. 
So that's about it for the March 1st beta patch breakdown. Um, if you have any other opinions, uh, make sure to leave me comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider leaving a like down below and subscribing to see more Overwatch content and news. See you guys next time.